so something is always breaking on the go-kart and this time it's uh one of the spindles actually sheared and it's look how clean that shear line is um this is actually either the factory weld or it's right here where it comes off of the hex part that i welded onto the spindle you can tell it's rusted i never painted it but um it's sheared off cleanly right here and i don't know if that's part of the manufacturing process where they weld the bolt to the nut the hex uh nut part or if it's uh formed in one piece and there's higher stresses there this is a regular bolt it wasn't like a it was like a grade 5 bolt i believe um so i think what i'm going to do is try a grade 8 bolt this held up for probably a couple of years but um i don't like that happening um in some of the places we drive that could be that can be pretty bad so what I'm going to have to do is recreate these. I think I'll I'll definitely go with a grade eight bolt. We'll see how that holds up. All right. So this is the old one of the old spindles. The other one is here. You can see it sheared off. This is a grade five bolt, and um, I picked. I was able to find some grade eight bolts. I had to drive a few miles to get them, but um, in this size, at least, my local hardware store doesn't carry them in this size. But I have grade 8 bolts now, which are supposed to have a higher shearing strength. Same size as these. I'm rebuilding the spindles. So I cut some DOM tubing. That stands for drawn over mandrel, which means that if you look down inside, you see no weld seam. So my 5 8 inch bolt um, that slides through there doesn't have any resistance. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to deburr them with this tool. I recommend getting one of these. Um, they're probably about 6 to 10 bucks in that range, and they come with at least one extra tip. Uh, at least the one I did did. And so you can actually take those and deburr them as I did this one on the inside. Very handy. I've all, I used to use a Dremel, but this is so much easier. So sorry, the camera's not focusing either. So anyway, what I also need to do is put a bevel on the edge like this so that when it comes in contact with this area, it can flex a little bit more than it would otherwise. So that's what I'm going to do, put a bevel on this. Um, I'm, I will cut these pieces out and do that later, but what I need to do is weld the bolts on. And when I do that, I'm going to use this little jig that I made. You notice that that's not quite 90 degrees. I, I can't remember exactly what I did. It's probably three to five degrees out of 90. Um, so what that allows me to do is set this at a little bit of an angle. I have some unequal A-arms. I don't know if you can see it. The bottom one is a little longer than the top. You can see that I have it sitting out, I don't know, maybe three-eighths of an inch. And so to make that up, I put this at a slight downward angle so that when it goes in, it will be straight. Um, that helps actually pull the steering straight again when you're coming out of a turn. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, this is how I'm lining it up. Basically, this little cutout here is just to make sure we don't hit the nut here, or the nut end of this bolt. And then um, I'm moving this about an inch and an eighth from the bottom. It doesn't really have to be exact or anything, it's just basing it off of my old one. Um, and then the, this arm that comes off here is just above it. I just want to give myself adequate room. Um, so, I just want to make sure that I'm going at a downward angle, um, and then I'm close to the bottom here when I'm going at a downward angle, otherwise I'll have the wrong angle. But that's how I'm doing it. Um, what I'll probably do now is just go ahead and clamp down a couple of things just to make sure that when I tack them they don't move. Um, I may not clamp them down, I'll, I'll decide here as I, as I do it, uh, but what I'll do is I'll throw about three tacks on this, and then before welding this on, I'll actually preheat this and heat it up as much as I can 
so that I get a really strong weld um, so I don't get a failure there because I have the very first time I did this not this spindle but a different spindle I did get a failure and so by preheating this um, before welding it I can ensure a strong bond now I believe this uh, is zinc coated so that when I do this it's in a well ventilated area and I'm not breathing in the fumes because that is poisonous um, so if you're building your own spindles you know be sure to keep that in mind The final piece on rebuilding these spindles is to get the arms on the spindles for steering in the correct position. And for Ackerman steering, you'll have to Google that if you want. What I'm doing is I'm just making my spindle um, straight and then you tie a line from the center of your back axle, which I did down there, and you bring it up to the center of the spindle. Now I'm actually going to the left side of the spindle. I need to tweak it just a little bit. So I'm at the center of the spindle. And as long as this is straight, I can take my arm, spindle arm, steering arm, whatever you want to call it, line it up and make sure that the hole right here is in line with this right here, this line. I'll tack this on here and then I'll end up taking it off and welding it. Um, I'll, I'll do this to both sides. Um, I'll just take this line and move it over to the other side. Once those are done, um, the spindles are done, I'll probably throw a quick coat of paint on them and then put them on and try it out. Okay, here they are, all welded up. Um, not my prettiest welds, of course, but they should be plenty strong for the application, and I've never had any problems with the spindle arms or anything, just the spindles. 
So one thing you didn't see me do off screen was after I welded these on and before I put them on the uh, bolts down there, um, I took it over to my drill press, which is right back here. I put a 5 8 inch bit in it, which you can see. And I ream these holes back out because after you weld something and especially as hot as I did and let it shrink, um, uh, let it cool down, it shrinks and it was a little too tight. So I just reamed those holes out, pulled out some chips and those go on easily now. Um, if you don't do that, you may have a hard time getting them on and off in the future. Anyway, um, this is for comparison. This is the old arm with a grade 5 bolt on it. This is the new arm with a grade 8 bolt on it. This is the new arm over here that's been fixed. And the only thing I have left to do, which I'm probably not going to show, is to tap, to drill this hole through the threads so that uh, I can put in some type of a cotter pin or something to keep the castle nut from coming off. Um, just cinch up as tight as I need against the tire and that'll prevent it from coming out. I'll do that probably off screen also, but this is my method of building spindles. Here it is all done. I don't know if you can tell from the front, but I have just slightly a little bit of toe in this way and this way on the tires. Um, that helps straighten it out a little bit when you come out of a turn. Um, basically, I wish I almost would have bought the different, the kind of uh, steering arms that you can adjust just by twisting it, but I made these and they're sufficient. They basically adjust by loosening this jam nut and you can twist this in and out as needed and then tighten the jam nut back up against it. I had to adjust it for this side. The other side it was actually dead on where it needed to be. Um, so I'll go ahead and give it a test drive. Uh, it should be working fine now.